If you work in cybersecurity or enterprise IT, here's a name that probably made your blood pressure rise recently. It is Oracle eBusiness Suite Zero Day that has been disclosed in October. It's a critical remote code execution vulnerability in Oracle eBusiness Suite. And the scary part is it can be exploited without authentication. Another scarier part is it is being actively exploited in the wild and even tied to CLOP style extortion campaigns. So in this video, I'll break it down step by step. Let's start with the big picture. Oracle eBusiness Suite, or as called EBS, is a heavyweight enterprise system. It is used globally by companies for finance, HR, procurement. Basically, it's the backbone of critical business operations. Because of that, a remote, unauthenticated RCE in EBS is not just another bug. It's a full-on business disaster waiting to happen. Oracle's emergency advisory says the flaw is in the concurrent processing component, particularly in BI publisher integration. Well, let's do it in plain English. There is a web accessible component that can be reached over HTTP protocol. And if you send the right, or let me say, rather wrong request, you can execute code on the server without even logging in. That's why the CVS score is a brutal 9.8 out of 10, and why Oracle, Tenable, and several incident response firms are shouting, patch now. So let's analyze the root causes. What went wrong here? Oracle confirmed that the vulnerable component is in the Oracle concurrent processing product. It's tied to the BI publisher integration that handles document generation. Think of invoices, reports, formatted outputs. This component accepts XML and template data from the web interface. Now, when that data is not sanitized or validated properly, you get dangerous scenarios. Things like unsafe deserialization attacks, template injection, or XSE attacks. Oracle has not shared the full internals yet, but based on how similar past EBS bugs worked, the vulnerability likely allows an attacker to upload or send a specially crafted XML or template file. The system then processes that file and, well, executes arbitrary code on the server. In short, it is not about stolen credentials or privilege escalation. This one is pure remote code execution or RCE through input handling gone wrong. Now let's unpack the technical side a bit more. The vulnerable attack surface here is the HTTP interface exposed by the concurrent processing and BI publisher modules. Attackers here do not need valid logins. They just need to send a crafted post or get request to one of those exposed endpoints. This is it. That malicious request can contain, for example, an XML payload, a template, or some sanitized, uh, sorry, serialized data that triggers arbitrary code execution inside the EBS process. And well, after the execution is successful, the attacker gains the same privileges as the Oracle EBS application process, which in many environments is more than enough to pivot deeper into the corporate network. Now, public reports mention active exploitation, data exfiltration, and extortion campaigns using this exact flaw. Even worse, researchers later confirmed that proof of concept exploit code surfaced online. Think of now threat groups, reportedly including actors with ties to CLOP ransomware and extortion gangs. They started scanning the internet for exposed EBS systems. Well, their playbook goes like this. First, reconnaissance. They scan for public EBS login portals or BI publisher endpoints using one of the tools they might use is Shodan. Next, the exploit phase. After the discovery, they send a crafted HTTP payload to trigger the vulnerability. The third step is after the exploitation is successful, they deploy a web shell or maybe a custom script, exfiltrate data such as HR and financial data, and then they would send ransom emails with a proof of the stolen information. The scary part now here, some of these victims did not even realize they had EBS exposed to the internet. Now, if you manage Oracle EBS, here's what you should do immediately. Step one is to patch. Oracle release an emergency fix, especially for this CVE. If you have a valid support contract, maybe grab the patch and deploy it now. Step two, if you don't patch, don't leave EBS exposed to the open internet. Put it behind maybe a VPN or a firewall, limit it to trusted IPs and block unnecessary ports. That way you do not need to patch now, although you should, but at, at the end, at, at least you minimize the attack exposure. Uh, consider also temporary shutdowns. If you can afford downtime, disable the BI publisher or concurrent processing component temporarily, of course, until you patch. It's better than risking an intrusion. You may start hunting for compromise. For example, check for strange files or scripts under your EBS directories. New scheduled jobs, processes you do not recognize, 
and also monitor outbound network connections. EBS should not suddenly start talking to weird or unknown IP addresses or maybe even S3 buckets. All right, now let's start the fun part. Detection and threat hunting of this vulnerability. Well, in roadblocks, you may search for unauthenticated posts or get requests to this endpoint or to BIP or concurrent endpoints. You may look for base64 blobs or XML payloads with weird structures. Those are red flags or the first sign of active exploitation. On the affected host or on the suspected host, check for child processes spawned by the EBS app user. Like Java processes launching um, a bash shell, curl, or netcat. Any of those could indicate successful code execution. Now, if you want to check network traffic, look for sudden outbound transfers or posts to unknown domains. That's often data exfiltration. And if you're running a seam like Splunk, Elastic, or Sentinel, you can easily write queries to look for those signatures. Here's an example of a Sigma rule you can use in your environment to detect any exploitation attempts of this vulnerability. For example, this rule here uh, monitors your uh, BI publisher. So the BI publisher is being or would be monitored for any request to these endpoints. If any request is detected to these one of these endpoints, the rule will uh, actually zoom in on the request and check for these payload patterns. Any raw XML in the query, or if there is an embedded payload in base64, if there is traversal attempts, if these conditions, or if one of these conditions with a request to one of these endpoints uh, match, okay, the rule will trigger an alert. So basically, you can maybe uh, use a rule such as this one and integrate it with your seam or your environment to detect any active exploitation to uh, Oracle Business Suite EBS if you haven't patched yet. This is another Sigma rule that can be used to detect a successful RCE. So basically what it does, you see here, it monitors key processes, okay, Java processes, Java or Java W. And then if one of these processes spawns a child process whose name matches one of these, it will send an alert. Why? Because a Java process spawning bash shell or sh or curl or delegate or netcat, this is actually suspicious because this is first unusual relationship between these two processes, and next it is a highly indicative or successful remote code execution, and this indicates that the attacker has successfully exploited the server and is now uploading a web shell or actively interacting or exfiltrating data. These are three sample Splunk queries I created that can be used to hunt for this. Uh, vulnerability or active exploitation of this vulnerability. For example, the first one. In the first one, when executed, it returns all GET or POST requests sent to one of these endpoints. These endpoints are associated with Oracle EBS. Okay, if you have Oracle EBS, these endpoints uh, are actively used by the EBS process. Now, here with this query, I return all the POST requests or maybe even GET requests to these endpoints if the request contains or the query of the request contains payload patterns such as base64 or xml payloads okay so here you detect the an active exploitation of eps to scan for incoming requests you can use this query so basically here again i monitor the endpoints associated with oracle eps and then i specify the threshold here is 50 requests you can tune this based on your environment okay if you expect to receive maybe 200 requests uh, in a minute maybe you can type here 200 Okay, it depends on your environment. If you don't expect to receive uh, above 200, maybe you can write, or above 500 requests, maybe you can write 500 here. So detect any bursts of requests sent to EBS endpoints or BI endpoints. And the last one, uh, it's actually detects post exploitation. So here, this query assumes that the attacker has actually got in. Okay. And here, I want to audit or to list any exploitation of the Java processes when it spawns one of these binaries, which we explained earlier when we uh, outlined the Sigma rule. Okay, so basically here, if any Java process spawns one of the LOLBAS binaries, bash, curl, double get, here we assume that there is an active post exploitation and what shall upload it to the server. You may want to adapt this checklist if you are affected or if you think you might be affected. First, inventory all your EBS instances. Find out where they are hosted and prioritize any that are internet facing. Okay. Next, apply Oracle's official patch. The official hotfix eliminates the vulnerable code path once and for all. The third step you have to verify. Once patched, 
test normal business operations and scan the endpoints to make sure the vulnerability no longer responds. And then you may start auditing. Check if there has been any prior compromise. Look for new files, suspicious jobs or data leaks. And don't forget to rotate credentials and harden your environment going forward. Like for example, restrict admin access via VPN only. Deploy web application firewall rules and add EBS to your continuous vulnerability management cycle. At the end, if you think your system is already or has already been hit, follow your instant response playbook. Typically, isolate the affected server, capture logs and evidence, notify your stakeholders and involve Oracle support if you need to solve the problem. These kinds of enterprise level zero days remind me that patch management isn't just IT hygiene, it is business survival.